waiting on the invite. I mean, for him to receive the invite. Hey, How you doing? one second. I got it. One second. I hate to interrupt this. Hold on. Okay, okay. Hey, Grandma. Oh, Grandma, I can't talk about that right now on a live conversation, but I can't talk about that right now. So I'm going to have to call you back. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. So sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, your grandma wanted to talk. How you Yeah, doing? she was about to talk. I can't see all this. I'm doing. Like... Your head, the top up, like, from your nose up. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Let me share this live. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Let me share this live. I know I'm late. Welcome. Write a post. Okay. Okay, join in. Hold on. Come into the upper room. Come. <laughs> oh, that's good. Cool. That's cool. Come, in. Come into the upper room. Okay, so now what do I do? Oh, right post? Oh, there we go. Whatever. Okay, so now you can't see me, right? You got. I gotta get up a little higher. Yeah, it's it's kind of high. The oh no, I gotta uh come down. That's what I I forgot. I'm not about to do this high. Y'all not about to see my pregnancy weight not today and all this <laughs> quarantine stuff, girl. Oh my gosh. Hold on. I'm so sorry. All right. Oh. Oh my goodness. This jumping jack flash type of bullshit. <laughs> Oh, this is technical difficulty. See, we love the people. We just, is that, no, that ain't even better, girl. Now that's better, right? Yeah, it's better. It just, now the, from, from what I'm looking at, the, um, the comments, they're like over your face, so I can't really see your face. Oh, you. Usually you would have it down a little bit more, but since you have your face more down the bottom of the screen, you have like this much space to out for nothing, just dead air. But it's okay. I can still see you. I still see you. Still see me. And they probably can still see you. It just my comments is on your face now that I, I that I see on my end. Oh yeah, you're gonna. I have to. That's what goes. I have. I, let me calm down. <laughs> calm down. So listen, Linda. Listen. So that's what happens on my end. I, the comments are definitely over my face, and I think because I'm at the bottom. Right, but usually you're up a little so, more though. So you want me to sit in the high chair today and show my pregnancy weight? We gonna see your we, we gonna see your weight. How you gonna see that? We didn't see it last time. And I if I sit in a high chair, huh? Oh my goodness! I'm 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 busy. We gonna have to do this today because uh. If, if oh, let, right, me, get, let me. It doesn't have to be oh. high. Just a little. Ooh. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to the program. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and like and share this live. Yes, share, share, share. Don't be scared to share. Oh, mercy be the day. Let's see what's crack -a lacking Okay, now let's see what's happening right here. Now, Mary Jean, girl, is this better? That's better. You, you higher up now, but that's still better. You up. But you, last time you was a bit lower, but it's up to you. Whatever makes you comfortable. I can see you now. Okay. But if you want to go down to the Lord, that's that'll be fine too, because you're real high up there. But I can see you. Clear as day. I'll see you. Let me know when you're together. Okay, I'm together. This is the most it's gonna get today. Ooh. I it's good. I see, I see you. So how you doing? How you doing? Merry Christmas. 
day after. Merry Christmas <laughs> and Merry Christmas and Happy Kwanzaa. Today is the first day of Kwanzaa. It is. Well, well, Happy Kwanzaa. Thank you. I think I'm going to start celebrating that after I just learned from Truthful Tuesday and the last Tuesday before I learned more about Kwanzaa. So um, today. Um, I'm going to start that tradition. I don't have a black candle, but I got my candles on and, you know, I'm here. And I think the first day is about unity, if I'm not mistaken. So unity, you and I, you and I, T-Y. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's what, that's what I'm doing today. I'm feeling good. Christmas was good. You yeah. know, there was, you know, some, you know, I, I was, I'm, I'm blessed regardless. And I'm happy oh, yeah. my spirits were, are still in good spirits. But, you know, the devil did try us on, on Christmas. But, you know, it is what it is. Shook it off. Whatever happened, you shook it off, though. Right, right. Right. Now, did you go to your mom's? Yeah. Um, I went to a couple places. Um, I spent Christmas Eve with my best friend, Saida, and my godson. And I went to um, my mom's on Christmas and spent time with my, my mom and uh, her niece. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So your, I had a good time. What you, she not related to you? You say what? Your mom and your niece, her niece? Your mom's niece not related to you? Yes, yeah, she is. Oh, by the way, I, I worded that? Yes. You say my mom oh, and her oh, my God. You are such a mess. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I, she's related to me, but I was... You know how sometimes people, when people say mention cousins, right, right. it don't be the same. It'd be like, oh, that's like maybe a play cousin, but it was. I wanted people to really know that you know I was with my first cousin, my mom's niece. Oh, okay, well that's good. Because usually in, the, in this particular uh, cousin, I usually call my niece because I helped raise her when um, she was born. Okay. Yeah, but what about you? How was your Christmas? Actually, it was lovely, and for the first time. I would say in six years, that was six or seven years within the relationship that all the kids were together at once. So it was actually to us, it was very special. We actually enjoyed it. Okay. So all the kids were together. They were so excited. The two young ones, they didn't know their older sister was coming. So we kind of surprised them kind of on a road trip when we went to go pick her up. And they still didn't know. They yeah. thought we took a long trip because I, I actually dropped him off at work. And I told him I'll pick, I'll pick him up so that way we can just leave from his job. So when I uh -huh. went to go pick them up, the kids was with me, and I was saying, um, we're just going to pick up Dad and come back home. But they were like, why is it taking so long? I said, oh, because we're taking trips and detours <laughs> eight hours later. And then when she, they saw her, uh, when we picked her up, they was like, oh, my God, there she is. I'm like, yes, got it. So it was, it was actually lovely. We're always, everybody's still smiling still now because they're so excited. And they, they're actually That's good. delivering watching movies and stuff. So yes, this year was wonderful. We stayed home, enjoy okay. kids, enjoy their gifts and everything, and we played games and did some TikToks. I posted some. <laughs> so yeah, we really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a couple of them. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Hey Nicole, I see you out there. Just want to shout out to Nicole who's tuning in on my end. Who's tuning in on your end, Miss Mary? Hello, Miss Nicole. I don't see Nicole on here. But um, yes, we got about six people up here. I see Michael and showing us. Hey, Michael. Chris. Uh, there's hey, Chris. Miss, I see Miss Jen. Hey, Miss Janice. I see. Ray. All by Miss Janice. Lozine. I saw Lozine. So what's what's going on? What's going on for today? For today? Well, we, I know we delayed today. We're supposed to have it yesterday, but then there was Christmas and. We know people wanted to spend time with their family, so we decided to do it today to give them a break. But we do this every Friday, 7.30 Pacific time. Oh, hey, Nicole. Yes. Oh. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, too. Yeah. Um, for those of you who uh, was expecting us to come on tomorrow, I That's apologize, it. you know. Yeah, was it yet the other day before that? No, you said yes. You said tomorrow. I said yesterday. Oh, did I say tomorrow? Yes. Okay, thank you, girl. I'm all of I'm, my nerves is really bad today. I don't know what it is going on today. Hey, you, but I, I let me tell y'all for those who are. I said huh? you've been busy and running all week long, so now you slow trying to you're trying to calm down, but you've been on the go for for oh, seven days. 
I have. I really have. Because I've been in such a good, joyous spirit, like going here and there, you know, greeting other people and, you know, trying to uplift other people. I don't know what it is. It's something that I can't control and I don't want to shake it, but I know it ain't going to last long because, you know, going right. to the New Year stuff just pop off. But I'm trying to soak it all up in that I, as much as possible. Right. But I have been running all week long and it's been a fun time. I, I haven't been like really frustrated or upset. I've been kind of mostly calm through everything that went through oh, yeah. this week. Um, I was about to say something I can't recall. It was on the tip of my tongue, but um, yeah. About the about Christmas or the holidays or about your um your friend. Or what friend? Your best friend. Uh, oh, okay. So no, but I wasn't gonna talk about that. But I'll mention that um now. My, my best friend, she's better now. She has, was going through uh, COVID, and my initial plan was to you know give her an extended quarantine so I don't get sick. And you know I kind of felt bad for like because she felt like I was treating her like a leper and all that. And I was like, okay, well I'll make an exception. You know I'll just give you one extra week of quarantine because she'd already did two weeks, and I'll just celebrate um. Christmas Eve with her and then go to my mom's, right. you know, because I just wanted to make sure not only was I okay, but, you know, make sure that she had healed all the way completely. Right. And I was a little scared and I was skeptical. I can admit that. But um, we had a good time, though. We um, I made lasagna for the first time uh, for Christmas. And, I, and she made her batch, and it was so fun. We had, we was cackling about the different um, ways we make food. You know, I'm so sensitive and things, you know. But it was like almost like a, a lasagna challenge cook off. <laughs> it was good. Okay. Lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I heard you were speaking with your grandmother. Did you go by and see her as well or no? No, I didn't. I, I really want to. Uh... I'm really particular or, or being a stickler on this COVID-19 thing. I'm trying to stay away from as many people as possible. However, I did see her via uh like we're doing now facetiming right. and so we did talk and she did come over and i gave her her birthday gift i mean her uh christmas gifts and that was about it but i didn't see her actually on christmas or christmas eve oh, i just uh maybe i did see her christmas eve and i gave her her christmas her stuff then but not hanging around and all that i didn't do that yeah this year is different for everybody so it's like here at the door see you later <laughs> nobody want to know right so yeah, it's, it's, it was different for everyone this year. Hopefully 2021 will not be anything close like it was this year. And we can actually be around our families this time, but we'll see what happened, huh? <laughs> right. Are, you are your kids going to, uh, are your kids doing virtual schooling? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. They've been now since this, this school year started. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I was wondering, I was, wasn't sure if we covered that on our first thing about schooling and the COVID and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, Man, why I keep forgetting what I was about to say? I know it's about to be good. We got a good show tonight planned and stuff. Yes. Oh, so, okay, so that's why I did want to talk about this. Um, I know I had two topics that I wanted to cover, but I forgot, like, um, being that Christmas was on Friday, right? That means New Year's Day or our show is going to be next Friday. Is that New Year's Day? Um, let me see what this calendar is say here. Yes, next Friday is the well, well the first, but we have thirty first is Thursday, so the first three years on Friday. So either way, those thir thir thirty first is like a you know a special day. Thank God we ain't got to do nothing on Thursday, but we got to do spe something special for the new year, a new show, n the first day of the new year. <laughs> so we got to talk about what we're gonna plan. Like Maybe you guys who are listening, I didn't realize you said that. Huh? I didn't realize that you said that next week, next Friday is a new year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You excited, girl? We're going into the new year with a new show. Right. <laughs> wow. Ooh, 2021. So that's what, that's what I wanted to say. So I made it a, um, I wanted to, um, though I was running late today, I really wanted to come on. I'm glad we did decide to go ahead and, and do it the next day mm -hmm. um, instead of just waiting until the next week because I was like, oh, no, no, that's we, how are we going to pick up from that? We just got to stay consistent as much as possible. And I just was like, she believed in me to, enough to do this show, so let me just, you know, fight the the tiredness or fight the just relaxation. Just go ahead and do, and I'm, I'm glad I did go ahead and fight it. I'm here doing the show. I'm glad to be here is what I'm trying to say. So I love you, Mary girl. We're going to do this thing, but we got to come out, come up with something very special for the people 
next um, Friday. We should, yes, we need, to, we will, we will, we will. Our mind. So I hope we, uh, after after we debrief, we come up with like a little something, something. Yes. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> so do you remember what you was going to say or? That's what I was going to say. Oh, that's, oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it all, it all remember, I remember now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's get into our first topic of the evening. Okay, okay, okay. You want me to start? It, it looks like you keep glitching. I don't know if it's um because I see myself clear. Do I see am I clear on your end or am I glitching on your end? You're glitching on my end a little bit. Okay, let me see something. Ugh. I'm trying to move it closer to the okay. We'll see from here. All right. And I'm gonna turn I'm gonna try to turn off my comments for Move my comments to the side so I could see myself. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they growing, they growing. <laughs> show, show what your mama gave you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, I just happened to talk, I, I happen to think about some. <laughs> I happen to think about some things that went, you know, that um. Uh, some, I just, I don't even know how to start this conversation or bring this topic up, but I was watching um, Tyler Perry's uh, TV series called Sisters. And this particular series was about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to touch too much on the people who go through domestic violence, but I really want to talk about what would one encourage how do you encourage the support system of those who are supporting those who are going through domestic violence? And what I mean by that is, you know, many times uh, those who are abused go back their abuser. And then like say if an uncle is called or a cousin is called or a father is called and that th those male, in male um, protectors are put in jeopardy. Their lives are put in jeopardy for trying to protect them innocently. You know, it's it's it's, right. uh, it's nature. It, uh, for me, it's innate nature to uh, go and protect people. And I just watching that TV show was like, it's only so much a person can do before something either happens to the support system or the support system and the person who was going through the domestic violence. So I was just like, well, when is enough enough? When is when do you say I I I can't be involved? I don't want to be involved. Or when do you say I'm just gonna go to jail? So put some money on my books because uh, I'm about to murder this person. And then I thought about another flip side of everything. Sorry to cut you off, but I thought about uh, the the things that surround domestic violence. Like could the person be on drugs or could they be mentally ill? Could they have also suffered abuse from a different situation? Right. And I, and I just found myself just thinking about the scenarios. And the first thing that I thought of was like how um, African Americans who are coming up more prevalent in the in in um, our TV screens and on, on social media that we're killing ourselves or that we're struggling with mental illness. If people are being more vocal about, hey, in the Black families, there's mental illness and addiction to drugs or whatever. So how do we not treat them like the police and the, who kill our innocent, mentally ill people? I don't want to be like the police and react to a domestic violence situation because someone has a mental illness. So how do we deal with the, the issue at hand, which is the mental illness or the drug addiction before somebody get hurt? Right. So that's what I wanted to talk about because I, I saw on Tyler Perry's uh, series that it wasn't a lot of male representation of how people are supported and how it really affects people and how, how the, 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 the perspective of the, the support system. Right. Now, it can all depends on the person. Is the individual, the individual person. Because some people, they may not um, seek change or want change into something, like you say, dramatic happens to them. Um, but some, mm -hmm. some people, certain things, dramatic things can happen to them, but they still may feel at the same time that it's okay. This, it, they still love me. This is what I'm used to. This is okay. It's a normal because they're used to that environment. So it, it just, 
<laughs> something like that is kind of hard to answer. That has to be the individual person, individual person themselves to answer that question because I'm telling you, I've known people that have been in situations like that and I'm looking at them like, mm -hmm. girl or guy, just leave. Like, why? You, you, you want to leave when they're actually halfway about to kill you or kill someone you know or kill themselves? Then you feel like it's time for you to go? But they say mm -hmm. all the time, the ones that still say, they're like, oh, no, they love me. They, they don't really mean like that. They're going to change. I know I can see the good in them. I know they're going to change. But it's like, you going, I'm just saying, give somebody, somebody like like 60 days, you know, I mean, 60 days, six months. Then you going into a year. Then you going to a year and a half, two years. Now, that's a little bit too long to keep going through that and knowing that eventually they're not going to change. If they can't make it past, if they can make it past, to me, I feel, if they can make it past six months, and not change for you, they're not going to change. So now it's time for you to find a way to get out and then to speak up to get help. And then, but nothing about you saying how um, you try to go, someone may try to go and save someone that's in a domestic violence situation and they become the person that actually get hurt in the end. Now that too, yeah, that that's, it can be very, 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 very dangerous. And so you got to be careful on how you kind of handle situations like that. And you can't go in crazy. You have to think very tactically how you're going to handle every move of the way because you don't know what the other person is thinking. And they may flip out when they know that you try to come and rescue the person. You know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's very scary. It's, it's, it's a lot. Uh, I don't know. It's, 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 it's To me, it's scary. It's scary to deal with. You know, it's scary to deal with. It is very scary. Face. It's very scary. It's very scary because if a person blacks out, you don't know what they're gonna either person black. Right. Anybody, even the person that's coming to protect, they could come out and black out because that's their family or their friend or their loved one. Yeah. And I have two tra two tra traumatizing stories mm -hmm. um, that I would like to share with our viewers on today to let them know that um, it's very serious and it does happen around holiday seasons. I know that the winter months and the fall seasons can bring a, a lot of depression and a lot of um, sadness, even though it's supposed to be a joyous time. Right. But um, um, I went to a cosmetology school. It was uh, Bella Institute on Division in Portland, Oregon. And one of my instructors, um, I was, I'm struggling with if I should say the name, but I'll just leave the name out just, just for uh, the, the, the um, respect out of the family. Right, right. And and the children. The, um, my instructor had two children, and she came to the came to school to do her job, and she was just having a bad day that day. And I was like, "I'll help you. Let me know. You know, I can run up and do. You know, I'm one of them type of people. Let's get about about it." And I that she taught me a valuable lesson: don't always run up into every fight. Mm -hmm. And she said, "My my husband. It was her husband at that. My husband is a, a part of the Ku Klux Klan. He's a skinhead." And just don't worry about it. I'll make it through. Less than seven days, he, she had a restraining order and everything. And he shot her in the head in front of her children. Oh, my gosh. So for those who are listening, please know that domestic violence is very serious. Mm -hmm. And it's so serious that I want to give out the hotline for domestic violence. There is a hotline if you're struggling, if you want to get out of that relationship. Um, let me see what the number is. Okay. Uh, Portland Women's Crisis Line is 1-888-235-5333. That's the Domestic Information and Services uh, line uh, for the Portland Women's Crisis, 1-888-235-5333. And I wanted to talk about this because I also, um, during my, um, as a queen, we raise funds for nonprofit organizations. And one of the nonprofit organizations that I was part of uh, every year was a fundraiser for Bradley Angle. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Bradley Angle, but I encourage everyone who's listening to go ahead and check that uh, that uh, site out and that organization. Uh, Bradley Angle is an organization that helps um, women who have been uh, experiencing domestic violence, um, women and children. Um, my mom is a case manager for women and children. And so this is a topic that's very close to me. It's very, uh, I'm very passionate about uh, supporting those 
uh, who are enduring domestic violence. And I want to say this too, just to be clear, that not only do women go through domestic violence, but so do men. Right, right. People don't think that, but they do. Mm -hmm. I've seen and heard many women attack men and beat the shit out of them or manipulate the situation to where they're getting their ass whipped. Mm -hmm. So, um, just it's very important to me that I that I say this because um, it, it's it's weighing on my spirit. I think it's very very. Uh, we need to. I needed to get this off my chest, right. and I, I didn't want to talk about it sure. because we're, I'm in such a jolly spirit and stuff. But I did yeah. want to say it because that's what's on my heart. And somebody might be out there needing to hear it, so get it out. Let's hear. It. Yeah. So uh, to, into, into, uh, go into more to that uh, about domestic violence. <clears throat> a lot of times I know um, that people are not only going through domestic violence, but they're also depressed, PTSD, anxiety, uh, just straight up bipolarism. I said bipolarism, is that a word? But being bipolar. Um, yeah, and just all these different things. People are schizophrenic. Um, and then what changes the whole dynamic is when people are, um, so low and so down and so distraught and or hopeless that they turn to drugs to numb the pain. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm just now realizing that you have to combat one at a time. It's not always the best to try to go after both issues. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really challenging. So if anybody got feedback that want to comment or hit us up in the inbox about questions or comments or what, what, what would be your advice? to uh, someone who's going through it or how a gift can you tell us how if, if you know someone who went through it just give, give some feedback on how you would address uh trying to help someone going through domestic violence and how do you support those who are supporting those who are enduring domestic right violence. and also ways of how they can get out of it as well yes With definitely yourself or the other person mm -hmm. totally yeah you got comments yeah, I was, um, it's Joe Andrea. She said a really good one is Clackamas Women's Shelter. Oh, she was saying about the, um, the hotline shelter, a safe place. Um, they help, uh, they helped her and her kids as well. So that's okay. To use for thank okay. you for that information. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Mary, it's just, it's just really crazy. And I, I just never really, uh, I don't think a lot of people. Uh, think about those who are going through it at this time of season, you know? Right. Especially, like you said, around the holidays, around Christmas time. Yes. You think everything is so good and you're high and then they know how to mask it very well. It's both both people, the, the victim and the, the, the abuser, they know how to shape it and hide it and camouflage it. It's almost undetectable. Right. And it, it, it could be right in your face and you just don't even realize this. You would least expect it from some of the people. Exactly. That's true. That is true. Yeah. So I just, I'm just been struggling with like, you know, how do... Do you know any male mans? I know you said a woman from your the your school you went to, the hair school. You know any mans that actually went through domestic violence that were actually was the one being ab abused? Uh, yes, yes, I do, I do, I know. I, I even know uh, uh, two couples of the GLBT community, and that was surprising. And I, I, I actually, um, it was, I don't know, it, it, it was surprising because it was a relative who was part of the GL, GLBT community and they were enduring the abuse. And I was literally told to stay out of it, that they liked it and that it was nothing that I could do because they were going to go back in. That was partially true. Um, but I don't believe that anyone likes it or believes that it's okay. No matter if they're going through, um, it's not the abuse that they like. They want and love that person or they want the yeah. affection and attention and the abuse to stop. And they just want it to work. Right. Because they do feel and believe that there is something about that person that that they love about that person. So they will but it's not like they, they love the abuse. I will never even bow down and agree to that. Um, but I will say that sometimes people tend to stay because of that 
love. Right. They feel that that's love. Now, and I, uh, that, that now, go ahead. Said there's a way that um, she found out how to help someone that's going through domestic violence. When her friend, she said that um, I message people privately that I know that are in a domestic violence relationship, and and um, to text me a random secret word to know and give me their location on the phone to come to where they're at. To, and when, once they send the word, so they will send a word to her privately. She'll know that they need her help then, and then she'll come to the location where they're at, and they send location as well. Okay. That's, that, is, okay. that is another way, too, to have those cold words, you know, when they feel that the person yeah. can help to get out. That's that mm -hmm. actually is excellent. Uh, yeah, I agree. Let me pull my comments up just in case, because I don't want to miss nobody. Oh, yes. Oh, there's lots of comments over here. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And that's true. Do you like, think? They do feel like the person will change. That's why they try to stay there. But nine times out of ten, they do not get worse because they become more and more controlling. Um, Henry Felton said, um, hello, Henry, by the way, um, Mr. Henry. Um, I think nowadays domestic violence is glamorized and we forget how serious it is. Thank you for the reminder. You're welcome. Um, let me uh, scroll up. Joy, Joy Andra said a really good one is, oh yeah, Clackham is okay. Now I can see her comments. Nicole said, I've messaged people privately. Oh, you read Nicole's right. too. Okay, you can see everybody's message, huh? Right, and then Nicole also said, um, don't ever make a domestic violence victim feel ashamed because that's very hard for them to become, um, uh, very hard for them because love is blind. Or love is blind. Yeah. Right, right, right. And yeah, they, um, the same. they won't tell you anything else and they'll continue to go through that because they don't want you to judge them. That that's and I, I, that's crazy. I that is very, very true. And I literally was telling someone that I don't judge you. And I don't judge you because I'm just gonna I, I hope this does not tarnish my intent right. of the conversation. Um, I really want to speak authentically, but my experiences of growing up seeing domestic violence, I grew up thinking that that's what I wanted in my own for myself. Mm -hmm. I had relatives. I was raised with all women and many of them endured relationships with men that were not pleasant. And there was times when I would ride with my relatives and egg the, the male's cars or bust the window out, or just come up to their defense, and I'm 10 years old, cussing grown men out and things. Just that was just that was naturally me. Right. Um, I when I was young, my grandmother's uh, boyfriend pushed me down. I hit my head on the coffee table, and she uh, pulled out her gun. And she, but before she pulled out her gun, she uh, pushed him out of her front window, and he had blood all coming down his face. And I knew my grandmother was a bad bitch from that day on. So when when domestic violence happened with somebody else in our fa in our family. I called her and she whipped that motherfucker's ass too. Oh. So it's it's just in me to react and it's very triggering. And I don't think that people who who know me, who call me uh, for protection, I don't think that they understand how triggering it is for us. And you can never uh, say when someone is going to uh, react. Like if- Right, right. You tell someone that you've been abused, mm -hmm. you no longer have control of what that person might do to your abuser. Mm -hmm. So you might want to think about that. And I'm not saying putting all the pressure on them, but know that it can go there. Right. It can really go there. It can be really dangerous. So let's make our conscious decisions for those who of us who have our right mind, who are in our right mind. Let's look at the patterns. Let's attack what it is while we can right. before it gets to another uh, level of not understanding or that there's no more talking or getting through to someone. Mm -hmm. It's really sad. Oh yeah. I haven't experienced any domestic violence this way because I know if I put their hands on me, it going down. I'm like, <laughs> but no, I have yeah. to say, I know it's not time to be funny right now, but I'm like, I know I probably could have been in a situation like that, but I saw red flags. And when I saw those flags, I was like, no, thank you, I'm good. Because I don't feel like scuffling with nobody. <laughs> I don't want to put no hands on me. I don't want to put my hands on nobody. So when you, like like, like we're saying before, some people, they know they're in a domestic violence situation like they, and they want the person to change and they love them so much that they want to stick by them. 
But mm -hmm. if before, at the beginning of a relationship with, when you're with someone, for me, if I see those signs, I have to go. Because I've watched too many movies, I've seen too many people go, go through um, too many situations like that, and it was so hard for them to get out. And I just felt so bad for them. And it's like, no matter what I said to them, even if I said, I'll take you, we'll go far away. We'll go, they, it, they, it, nothing worked. They didn't care about nothing I said. They just knew that person was going to change. They just mm -hmm. knew the person was going to change. But the person didn't change. Well, the actual person didn't act, one of the, the situations, the person did not change. They hurt, hurt her so much, physically, mentally, verbally, emotionally, all that, to the point someone has stepped in even though she didn't want the help, but they still stepped stepped in and broke up the relationship. But she mm. still was fighting. No, he loves me. He loves me. No, he do not love you. He just loves right. you. Let him do what he can do to you. He loves that mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. But he don't love you as a person. If he did, he wouldn't be treating you like that. That's how I feel. I feel you. And then you mentioned something too, Mary, that that for you, you you notice signs. What would for those who um, may not know what signs to look for? What were some of the signs that you 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 think are very uh, important to look out for? One, when they try to keep you from your family. <laughs> Two, when they become very controlling. Um, three, when um, I, to me, I feel like when they're always angry, you know, and then they look like they always they look like they're always up to something. <laughs> like they look like they planning something. You know, that's that's what I feel. That's why it maybe it, it wasn't true. Maybe it had not been true, but I. To me, I, that, that was my sign. And what I felt like a domestic violence could have started from. Because if I'm starting a relationship negative, then it's going to be a neg negative relationship. And so if they give all the negative signs and someone, you know, try to want to keep you from your family, that means they want to keep you themselves. And that way they can control you. And so if you get in a relationship and you try to go see your family, then you're going to have a problem. So that that's what I said. That was my sign. If you keep it from my family or my friends, oh, I know. This is not going to work. <laughs> Because I know for sure that yeah. attention is down the line to do with me if I go see my family and my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I just, I don't know what else. I wish there was, I'm, I'm not sure if there is anything like this, but is there any type of uh, training? Like there is only a hotline, but what do you, how do we train other people to help those who are in, in domestic violence relationship what like what is the things I, I guess what i'm asking is what like you mentioned um something about um to the effect of not jumping in too soon and being cautious because you can make it worse there are many things right. that you can do to make it worse. so what are some of the things that a person can do to make it better that's a good question <laughs> um what we talked about giving the cold word and the cold sign but what happens when um you're in the midst of it and you, you got to make a decision to say, tell the, the woman or male to say, hey, let's get you to safety. And they say, I don't want to go. I don't know. I ain't going to put that at the end. I'm going to say something else. But if they say they want to go, don't. That's a hard one, <laughs> to be honest with you. Because uh, if they don't want to go, and if you become the person to try to go help them, you may get beat up by both of them. Because you, and, and she said she didn't want to go, or he said he didn't want to go, and you came there, and you just... um cause a bigger problem so that I don't know how to answer that because and then I'll bring that up because you know even there was a situation that happened um in the GLBT community um and it was dealing with suicide mm -hmm. and I I what I gathered from the the altercation is that um, a lot of people are not equipped to deal with addiction right suicide homicide so how are we telling people oh you can get out of this or to do this or do that when we don't even really know what the right words are to say to people that guide them into the right direction we could be doing it all wrong right all wrong or, or like with the suicide situation um in this particular situation uh the person who was struggling with suicide confided in someone else and they went and told someone else there was another uh, incident years ago where someone uh, told their um, their HIV status mm -hmm. and that was told. And it was no, the, the reasoning why it was told was they didn't know how to deal with that information. Right. So sometimes when we tell pe certain people certain things, they're not equipped or able to even help us. And they drop the ball and fumble it so bad to where it made things worse 
when they're telling other people's business and not realizing it. Right. That's happened like several times that I can see that I can say that I've witnessed in my in my entire life. Like if you don't know how to deal with a situation, stop always saying, oh, call me in the, at the midnight hour. Call me anytime you need me. I don't care what it is, what y'all going through, call me. You know, some people are just nosy motherfuckers and want to be in the motherfucking business. Right. But when the real shit comes to the band, what you going to do when talking about, oh, you can always come to my house. But what you going to do when it comes to your window, when they busting your windows down, bitch? Is you really singing that same ooh, ooh, ah, ah tone, bitch? For real, right, right. It kills me when I see that shit on Facebook. Right. Oh, girl, he ain't no good. You can make it what I gotta do. Grab my knife. Girl, sit down. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because you're not... I, I had to ask myself that, too. Like, am I really ready to go to jail for somebody? Am I really to put, Am I really ready to put my life on the line for someone who is not going to look out for me if I go to jail and kill this person for them? Right. That's a tough question. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I had that. This was heavy on my brain. I'm just like now. Um, now Nicole said sometimes about the in the domestic violence situation. She said sometimes uh -huh. they don't show any signs till they get um too far into the relationship. They lure you in with gifts and loves and switch up once you are in love with them. That's true. Mm -hmm. They change once they feel like they reeled you in. Uh, yeah, they make a big old change. And then she also said, um, people need to know their worth and take time to actually get to know the person before they make it official. They need to uh, set boundaries um, at the very beginning. So when you set boundaries at the very beginning, the other person kind of know what they're dealing with. And they, they may not even do it. Start a domestic violence, they may end up leading a relationship because they know what kind of person you are. Like, oh, this girl gonna flip out on me, so I know I can't handle her like that. Or this guy gonna flip out, man, no, I can't handle him like this, so I'm gonna leave this relationship alone. So yeah, setting boundaries at the beginning, yes, let them know, set that line of, do what you not gonna do to me, to me or with me. Yeah, that's true. That's a good one. I also remember one thing that an ex friend of mine said. But I, I, what her words? She had a lot of wisdom, but the bitch was still ignorant. <laughs> but she told me one very good thing that once a man jokes and say, "Bitch, I'll hit you," mm -hmm. you better believe. The first time, you better, you better, when the, you better. don't play no motherfucking games when a man or anybody that's that you love say they're gonna put hands on you jokingly, yeah. they're not joking because why would you even joke like that? Why would you say, I'm gonna beat your ass? Right. Who would say that to somebody that loves you? Exactly, forget the hop, skip, and jump. You better fly, <laughs> throw your ass, you better get the hell up out of there. Right. The very first time you hear those words uttered out of somebody's mouth that yeah. say they love you, you need to run and go the other way. Yes, indeed. Because they're not joking. They're not joking, baby. Right. right. Because once they see that you'll take that as a joke, oh, that's they got they they gonna that's the first way they, they reel you on in, sweet. Yeah, they reel you in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take it. Let that be one of your first signs. If you if you can't say it's fine, let that be the one you dip out on. Don't 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 test the waters. Let's say he's joking with you. Even if he is joking, let him joke with somebody else. Not you today, huh? You better get up out of there. Right. Don't let it be. Right. You not a part of his comedy skit, bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, uh But yes. Yeah. That is that that's a good topic that you brought up though. That is like the number one thing in the world I have just not have not came to understand of why people stay. Like I know that some people are a little bit more weak of mind than others, and some people have more faith than others that they would change, but it's like, I wish they could all have that one little piece of knowledge in them that, like, if they see the sign, just go. Don't stay. Don't test. Especially the ones that be having kids. You know, it's like a lot of oh, yes. kids, and they stay there. And it, and it didn't just be the, the, the spouse. It'd be that they then start hurting the kids, and you still stay there. Now, you told them to put their hands on your child. That should be, like, no more. That's it. I'm definitely gone. Not, you're not keep saying that, oh, I love them. They're going to change. I see the good in them. No. When they put... That's like you were just saying when they get that sign up, well, I'm going to bust your neck. Don't take it as a joke. Take it for real. If they put their hands on your child in a way like that and you say they're going to change, oh, you don't need to change. But when you show me what you need to show me, I got to go. Because you put your hands on my child, either you want to jail or I'm going to jail. So I got to go. And you're not going to ever touch my kid again. But I wish everyone... But, you know, every, every, no one, everyone's not perfect. So, but I wish everyone actually could just just have that knowledge when they're going through that situation. They know that one little sign. Just go. Don't stay. Don't don't put hope in that person because you're only going to hurt you right. in the end. 
That's all you're doing. You're going to hurt yourself in the end by keep holding on that person. Let them change. Let them show you from a distance they change, and then maybe give them a chance. But don't stay with them because they're not, it's going to be hard for them to change when you allow them to keep doing the same thing to you over and over again. It's hard to change when, you, it's, when it becomes normal to them. Uh -huh. and, and, and speaking of what comes normal, if something has come normal, that means it's been a behavior pattern, a habit. And habits are hard to break. Yeah. Behavior change is really hard to break. So nip it in the bud once you see it. It's exactly. And then the, uh, the one thing I want to piggyback off of what you said was when it comes to the children, realize that not just your safety involved, but when you don't say anything and you have children, you are now contributing to training your child to believe that it's okay. Right. That it's okay to be silent, to keep everything that goes on in your house is your house and all that black the stuff that we do back in the day. I wouldn't even just say a black culture because I know many yes. uh, other races, especially white people. Uh, you know, um, you know, a lot of things, uh, people like to keep secrets and the best way to do it is tell them what goes on in this house stays in this house. And that is not okay. That is continue, continuing generational curse. Right, right. And it's training children to, to go ahead and, and uh, keep silent. Right. Now, um, Jo Andrea, she said she stayed because um, she hated herself and wanted to be loved. And then she also said, it's crazy, but we all, sorry, let me go back up. She said, it's crazy, but we all want love. And sometimes we will stay because of that feeling of them loving us. Mm -hmm. And that's totally that's probably what they get them right there with that feeling. Yeah. Mm hmm I agree. Totally. Um, and, then, um, says, and then Nicole Nicole said that if people grew up with it in their um when people grow up with it in them, it seems normal and they follow suit. That's what you were saying. And yeah, it becomes normal. You ain't lying. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and they're gonna continue that on. It's gonna be hard for them to change. And so you meaning you're gonna stay in a relationship and thinking they're gonna change. If they're used to it, you need to see them change out of the relationship first, set it with you, because it's going to be hard for them to actually change 100%. They may do probably 40, 60, or uh, less than that, or 30, 70, but they're not going to change 100% while they're still in a relationship with you when they're used to doing that all their life, or seeing it all their life as a childhood, and then they go into a full adult, and they're still sort of doing the same thing. It's, 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 uh, it's hard for them to change. And don't, let, do it. don't let drugs come be involved either because that's a whole nother can of worms too. Oh. You Now you're dealing with someone who's off their rocker. You can't control them depending on what kind of drug they're on. And, and then not only that, you have to, if, especially if you have a newborn or say if you have a baby period or any type of child and uh, you're going out and, and doing the drugs and coming back. Now you got to be exposed to tuberculosis, right. maybe the drug residue that's on your hands, and then you're touching the baby or touching the child and kissing the child and come back with all different type of things. There's so much that goes into this type of situation. Right. So much. Now, um, Joe Andrea said that uh, my kids was my breaking point. My kids would never see or hear a person talk down to me or hurt me. So she used her child was a reason to make her strong to get out the relationship. That was that was good. That's good. That's that's the positive thing you could do to, if you to think about your kids and not continue the cycle with them. And I know mm -hmm. it's a lot out of you to do that. That was strong to make that move because I know it's kind of hard, especially when you want to feel love and you feel like they're gonna love me the, one day tomorrow they're gonna love me next week they're gonna love me. But I know, but then that you have the strength to think about your kids to know that. If the loving, you ain't seen love today, you don't, you don't know if you're going to see it tomorrow. So it's time to get me and my babies up out of here so we can go to safety and feel good and be relaxed. And you want to wake up to feel good. And you, you're home. Your home is be a safe haven. So when you wake up, you mm -hmm. want to feel comfortable, relaxed, not waking up scared, looking around the corner, thinking if someone's going to attack you just because they're angry that day or just because they want to put hands on somebody or if they're going to hurt your child or if they're going to just like burn the whole house down or just hurt you guys all just because, you know, you don't want to, you shouldn't have to feel that way when you're at home. That's supposed to be the safest place ever. You know, especially for kids, they really supposed to be safe at home. You know, so when, and right. so if you have a, if you have kids at home and now I'm not saying they're only because kids should be the reason why someone leave, you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying that should be a positive strong effort to say yes leave you know you don't don't put your babies through this they, they didn't ask for them they didn't ask to be here you know so don't put them through that so that was that was brave of you that was very yeah my, i wanted to say this too because something just came up in my head too and it's a read i'm being shady i don't give a fuck 
but um i'm keeping the real raw and uncut um but i'm gonna try to keep it cute and cute and christian um you know a lot of men cowardly men who beat on women usually struggle with a lot of things and they'd be the first ones to call out someone for their sexuality and things like that and i know they're probably listening because they check my um, facebook all the time i don't give a fuck if you got a job a good job or not but let me tell you something you are a coward to hit on a woman and got nerve to speak on what somebody else is saying, what else, what, however somebody else is living their life. Right. When your life is just all to shambles. It's shambles, baby. You might have a nice house, a nice whip, a nice this and that, but you ain't no man. You ain't no man. If you got to hit on a woman, mm. you's a sucker. Yes. Sucker sucks. Right. I whip many men that think they was bad ran up on me because I'm in a lip, lip rouge and, and blush in a wig, but you got your ass whipped. And I want to tell you, when you run, you're going you gonna to meet your maker. Many of you being out there who abuse people, anybody who are about, about the, uh, that abusive type of shit, you're going to meet your maker. Trust and believe. You're going to meet your maker. You're going gonna, gonna to try that white one, and that right one going to get that hot skillet and get you right together. Right. Trust me. Now, I remember a time, I think, um, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember you guys told me a story about you, Austin, and a couple others. Y'all was leaving a club one day, and you, you guys was dressed up, and then there were some guys that was like, mess with you guys, and you went in with your purse. You remember that? I do. I, there was a couple times like that. Yeah, I didn't play no games, and uh, he was, uh, one particular time I could uh, recall, um, it was in front of C.C. Slaughter, mm -hmm. and uh, he, I, River, uh, found out that he was in the military and I didn't press charges because he was in the military and he was young um, and I do respect those who are in the military because I can't get into the military mm -hmm. and at one point in time I did want to um, but I'm so glad I'm not and didn't get in it but I, I, I noticed that he was young I was way older than him and he was just acting immature but he still did a homophobic or transphobic act and he did try to physically hurt, hurt me and harm me. But I had to whip that ass to let him know, don't let this lip rouge fool you. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So um, I definitely remember that a couple times. I think a lot of people, it's always usually the loudest ones. I saw this, um, there's, I saw this thing on TikTok. You know, we're TikTok uh, girls. Yeah. Um, I can't remember her name, but there's a, she did on her TikTok. There's a 1966 study about homophobia in men. Mm -hmm. And one group of men erected when they were, uh, because of the, their homophobia, when they watched um, porn or guess, right. I don't know what it was, but y'all can go Google, Google this, 1966 uh, study on homo homophobia, homophobia. Oh, I don't know why I can't get it out. But uh, it was crazy because those who had the most homophobia, uh, usually had homo homo tendency right yeah so and though and I, I feel the same way with men who beat women and i first i used to get offended by that i was like why you gotta blame that that kind of shit on the girls we don't go around whooping on girls we don't want to whoop on no bitch we want to be like the women child what is you saying right. but i do see a common thread with men who talk the loudest shit especially in the black community the black heterosexual community or cisgender community they like to talk a lot of shit and it be them be the main undercovers or DLs and it's so sad. But go ahead, I see you looking at the thing. There's comments, questions. Oh no, I'm trying to pull up. No, I, I was trying to get back. Uh, I think it's um it was uh Deirdre. She said, um, I had to remind myself that love doesn't hurt. That was a way for her about getting out of domestic violence, that love doesn't hurt. You know, how they yeah. stay because you feel like, oh, they're gonna love they love me, they love me, but they're hurting me. So this is not love, so it's time for me to end this here. Yes. And um, Nicole said, I witnessed it with the LGBTQ uh, community when the Fleet Week in Portland and the dude got her A beat by some drag queen. Oh, wow. Hey. It happened. Uh, yeah. Well, they think they think drag queens can't fight just because they dress like mm -hmm. girls? And, and they do. They do. They really do, and it's and you know the cold piece is about is that uh, um, many, if not most, black transgenders who have been killed have been killed by the hands 
of black men. Oh, wow. Yet we all supposed to be Black Lives Matter. Right. But I had to throw that out there because there's a lot of us that go through domestic violence being black transgenders. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want, they don't want to be exposed or they don't want to, they don't want us to leave, but they want us to stay a certain way, but they don't want to give us all the love and keep us all in the closet and things like that. And might want to whoop on us. There's been two transgenders who were killed uh, by black men in Portland, all because of their fragile, fragile agility, whatever how you say it. <laughs> But yeah, they, it's a trip. The, the Maxi violence has many different legs and many different, you know, extensions. Right. Um, about the comment about the the, um, the drag queens beating the dudes up, um, Henry said, he was replying to Nicole, he said, that was Courtney. <laughs> he said, I'm pretty sure uh, Court, that was Courtney um, and a couple of others was with me. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I've never seen too many trans girls or drag queens fight back and win. I know many of them that... Now we'll say this. So we're talking about domestic violence and that um, abusers can be any gender. Right. Um, a lot of times uh, uh, I, I get on my brother or other men who cat call women. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of times, and I can say it myself, um, I've cat called straight men. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be triggering to get your ass whipped. And I've seen that happen several times in the GLBT community and they was not ready for it, but they responded and saying, oh, it was a hate crime. It was not a hate crime. You, you, not that you asked to get your ass whipped, but you did provoke the situation. Oh, wow. That's how I feel about that. But, um, yeah, some sometimes ass whoopings are called for. Sometimes they're not called for. I don't know how I just switched over to that time, but I just had to think. Of, I had to get that out of my brain. And then, um, but we do. Um, Deidre, she said another thing was me seeing my son treat his sister with disrespect or with disrespectful talking and talking to her crazy. Um, that's not how I wanted to raise my son. He should always respect women. Oh yeah. Definitely. Oh yeah. It's definitely a training type of thing. And yeah. if you don't at uh, handle that quickly, it can um, definitely develop into something else or with other people. Yes, indeed. Let's see. Oh, that was, that was the last one on that one. I'm glad you can see all the comments because I don't get them all. But yes, ooh, this is, this is a, a, a tough topic because it can go deeper and sometimes you may you know, say the wrong thing and the, and the person that right now could be watching it and you know, could be experiencing that and it may set them off so you kind of don't want to like you want to be sensitive to yeah. someone's feelings you know, and not go too far because no, we're not therapists, we're just only speaking our mind and speaking from the spirits and speaking right. on the topics of how, what we're passionate about so we have to keep that in mind Yeah, I agree. Thank you for mentioning that Mary because um, I did want to make sure uh, that though I'm expressing my sentiments that I don't offend anyone. So if anybody is going through domestic violence out there, male or female or transgender, um, do know that my intent is not to hurt or offend. My, my intent is to understand how can I help? Like, and I'll just be transparent. I'm, I know people in these situations and right now I don't really know what to do. Right, right. It's it's a different it's just the difference when it hits your doorstep or gets close to home, and I I, I know where I can go because I'm a I know I'm a natural protector. So I, I wanted to bring this to the forefront because it's really affecting me. Right, and um, I know that I'm not the only one. When I bring up topics on my own Truthful Tuesday, people send me messages and say, "Oh, I'm so glad you spoke about it mm -hmm. because I'm going through it too." Right, I was gonna say it too because Deirdre, she just said, "I'm glad you all are talking about this." Especially right now with people being at home twenty four seven, and that's yeah, especially kids that use um, school as a way to get away from it. You know, even or mm -hmm. even the the male or the female um, using work for a way to get away from it. You know, but now they're stuck at home, and so they're dealing with it even more. You know, because they're at home with this the person that's doing this message violence towards them. And you, you mentioned something about the kids going to school. I can even say the same thing about, you know, a lot of kids um, 
uh, who go through, um, not, it's not domestic violence, but who are getting abused at home, look forward to going to school to get away from the being abused at home. Right. So, yeah, this is a great time to discuss things that are going on in your home uh, and, and just see how it can be um, handled or I don't know the right words. Like you said, it's so sensitive. You don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Right. Um, and some of you guys have just started watching. Can you guys give other people that may wa maybe watching that don't want to speak up, but want to know other ways that they can get out of the domestic violence situation without um, getting hurt or hurting someone, you know, um, give them ways of like, well, I know one, uh, someone, I think it was Nicole said earlier, um, uh, uh, no, um, I think jo jo Andrea, she said, uh, giving a, a special sign to someone, texting them, you know, as a code oh, word, God. you know, other than, a, yeah. what else is another way a person can get out of it without getting hurt or getting anyone else hurt in a situation? If you guys know any, um, put some, give us some advice in here, because someone may go through and watch this and be like, oh, it may ring a bell in them, and they may use that. Some of the stuff we're saying now may have not rung a bell, but if you actually went through the experiences and you actually post, someone else may feel that and understand like, oh, this may work for me. I'm going to try this. And because um, I'm going to tell you, whew, I know there's a lot of people going through it right now. And it's just like, you can't save everybody, but you, you still mm -hmm. try. You still want to try. We're going to try to save as much as we can, but you can't save everybody because some people don't want to be saved because they, like you said, they on a wing and a prayer, hoping that person don't change and just they feel they're going to change in the future. But and I just want to, before we, I know we're getting ready to close up to wrapping up, oh, yeah. but I wanted to mention, mention this. Um, there's more than just uh, physical violence and physical Mental. abuse. There's, yeah, there's sexual violence, mm -hmm. emotional violence, psychological violence, spiritual violence, spiritual, yeah. cultural violence, verbal abuse, and financial abuse. And there's more. Right. Uh, but those are just some of, um, it's actually nine types of violence and abuse that I just pulled up. And uh, the symptoms of violence is loss of temper on a daily basis, uh, frequent physical fighting, significant vandalism or property damage, increase in use of drugs or alcohol, increase in risk-taking behavior, mm -hmm. um, detailed plans to commit acts of violence. When they, and that, I'll go into detail about that when they say, oh, I'm gonna bust you in your motherfucking head and make sure you can't see. They're very descriptive and detailed and don't play no games and take that as no little lightweight winded comment. Mm -mm. And, and then one last thing um, that I'll uh, say before um, uh, I'll, I'll let you speak, which I said it again, for those who are in experiencing um, domestic violence, uh, for if you're a woman, here is the line uh, for the women's crisis line in Portland, Oregon. It's 1-888-235-5333. Three, three. And after this um, live, I will look for the men's crisis line if they have one as well. Right. Now, um, De uh, Deirdre, she said, I would say about a way to get out or when you're trying to get out, um, I would pack a an emergency bag with clothes, money, bank cards, birth certificates, etc. So when you get your opening opportunity, you can just grab and go. Yeah, you gotta make sure that bag is hidden, tucked somewhere, because if he finds it or she finds it, oh lord! But yes, that is a good way to do it. Get it a, a, a runaway bag, a dip out bag, and have them uh, hidden somewhere. So when you get that open opportunity, the open slot to run, snatch that bag and dip. Yes, that way you know you got all your belongings, personal things you need, especially with the ID, birth certificate, and your bank cards, and and just go. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Well, this was a good little discussion tonight. I know it can get even heavier than this, but we're going to end it right here. So we you know, give you guys something to think about and, and be ready for us for next Friday, what we have in store. And um, But don't forget to share, 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 share. We're trying to get over to YouTube. So we got, need you guys to share, share, share the content. And thank you guys so much for those of you that actually um, missed uh, – Oh, um, Deirdre also, sorry, Deirdre also said that be mindful that domestic violence does happen in teen relationships. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, they do. Not only in oh, yeah. yes, they do. Yes, they can. Oh, that is the yes. truth. Yes, they can. And sometimes those stem from um, past over generations. And that's why you want yes. your kids. That's why when you see your, you, you go into a situation like that and you have children, go. End it. Because they were carried over. Even they'll feel that it's okay to be treated like this. Or they actually would start treating someone 
in that that domestic violence type of way. So, oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're welcome, Deirdre. And thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all all the comments. Thank y'all for joining in the conversation, making it um, very uh, interactive with us. Being engaged like with us. Thank you. And then, um, let's see. Was there anything that you needed to say before we end this here? Um, no, no, not that I can think. Of. And and um, one last thing for me, if. Anyone on here, if you actually um, have any or more questions or any uh, suggestions or anything you want to speak about privately, you can always message any one of us, um, Courtney or myself. You will um, see our link. We'll, I'll, I'll add his link on here, or her link on here, so you'll be able to contact her privately or you can contact me in my instant messaging as well. But don't forget, once again, you guys, just share, 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 and like, and uh, thank you for being engaged and continue to stay engaged because when you're engaged, it keeps us engaged. It feels like you guys want more and more and more because it's only going to get better from here. We're still taking little small steps before we give you guys the good good, but we're, we're trying to see what the audience we're working with. But thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys next Friday, 730 Pacific time zone. See you later. Bye, Mary. Bye. -bye. <laughs>